So guys, I've just come back from a weekend away, a whole lot of fun. We were in Byron Bay of all places and uh, it was a mate's birthday. And um, you know those trips that you go on and you come back and you think, geez, I actually need a holiday after my holiday. That's exactly what I'm feeling right now. It was great, but uh, what was even more pleasing is to see the sales come through on eBay. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about in today's episode. The balance between work and play. Can you take some time off away from the account and still get some sales come through? And what can you put in place? to make that happen for you because it definitely is possible. Huge episode, guys. A lot of cool sold sales items to get through as well. Let's dive into it. Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through my best sold sales items of the week on eBay. Uh, if you're here for the first time, guys, I put out three new videos every single week talking about how to make money on the internet. So if you want to learn a thing or two, if you want to make a couple of extra dollars a week, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It'd be great to get you on board the channel. And everyone else watching out there, you know what to do. Hit the like button, a great way to support the channel. And I just cannot thank you enough for it. Guys, I've got eight really great items to take you through today. There's a little bit of a story behind each one, a reason as to why I picked it out. And hopefully it could be a bit of value for you guys out there. So let's dive into the first item. Gonna kick things off with a bang here, guys. We've got the Beatles Studio Recordings box set, limited edition CD and DVD combo. Now this was brand new and sealed, a ripping item, but I wanted to tell you how I actually got my hands on this one. It was actually the lady at the post office. I go in and deliver my post. I've done it for months now, and uh, the lady behind the camera has always asked a few questions around what I do and how I go about doing it. So long story short, she's actually brought a few items in for me to be able to go on to sell for her. And uh, a bit of a consignment deal. I said that I'd do a 50-50 split of the profit for her. She said that that would be fine. So that's how I've ended up getting this one, the Beatles. She brought a few items in and this was probably the best of the bunch. So uh, this one has actually gone on to sell for $294.15. Just a ripping item, obviously being brand new and sealed. Again, DVD, CD, media is actually going on to sell for some good money, guys. Uh, the postage of $12, a bit of bubble wrap, and a satchel and this one is good to go. Uh, the fees are $44.12, guys, $238 worth of profit, a sales cycle of 34 days. So I get half of that, she gets half of that, 140 bucks or 100, and, what is it, 120 bucks each. Not too bad of a result there, considering I didn't have to pay any money for it. So I wanted to put this one into the video today. If you're looking to try and source some items, you don't really wanna be forking out too much cash. Consignment, sourcing items from friends and family and going 50-50 could be a really great way to go about it. Next item up is this uh, Microsoft ergonomic keyboard that I picked up in the thrift for $20. This was actually in a trip to the thrift video. You may have seen this one. Well, I'm very, very happy to report that it is sold for $119.95. So I think the fact that it was boxed and it looked like it had pretty much hardly been used. It was a USB connect with this one, so it was gonna be available for a lot of people to purchase. Uh, the USB connect for me here at home on the laptop, you can see behind me, it worked a dream. So I was actually able to confidently list this one and say that it was tested, it worked, it was good to go. Um, got the sale price there of $120. You take out fees and postage, $66.60, guys. A turnaround of just three weeks. So I was very, very happy with this one. Uh, if you are in the thrift and you're seeing stuff like this, the old VCRs, the cassette tape players, they all go on to sell for some good money. And the Microsoft keyboard has done exactly that. The next item up is a pair of Red Bull Holden Racing Team work pants uh, or, or cargo pants. Um, these were an interesting one because I didn't know exactly how to price it. There were no comps on eBay. One of you guys watching the channel, uh, this was in a trip to the thrift episode not too long ago, uh, said that it might be staff issued uh, for the Holden Racing Team. So. I was a bit unsure about it, didn't really know how to go about pricing it. In the end, what I did is I thought, look, it'd be great to get a $50 profit for it. And then I worked backwards and it ended up being around a $70 listing price to get that result. I only bought the item for $5. It was a 38 waist and I did get two of these pairs in the thrift on the same day. So it was a good grab. And in the end, it did sell in the space of 17 days for the full asking price of $68 and 95 cents. So guys, while it is an interesting item, I've profited $47.67. I wanted to put it into the video today, really to have a quick chat around what to do when you don't know how to price an item. I really uh, bring it back to what would you like to get for it as a profit and go from there. And then just judge to see how the traffic goes on your listing to see whether or not you've got the pricing uh, correct. I think I was within the ballpark. I've got another pair of pants of the exact same kind. So I'm gonna try and go for $80 and see if I can't get the result there. And that would net me about a $60 profit. So I think when you're selling clothing and you're making yourself 50 or 60 bucks, regardless of whether or not you could have got any more, it's still a pretty good result. 
Still selling a lot of shoes. Uh, they are a constant mover for me. I'm buying a lot. If you're watching my trip to the thrifts, you know it's my favorite item to sell. This was one of the good ones that I was able to move. Uh, this was the Nike Air Presto. These are a pair of women's running shoes. They were plain black, a little bit of white on the bottom there, as you can see. Uh, I paid $8 for these in the thrift, guys. They were pretty much in like new condition. It was quite crazy uh, to get them for just eight bucks. And they have ended up selling for a much higher price than the average for myself, $80. So you take out fees and post, guys, I profited $52 uh, on a single set of shoes. So 51 day sales cycle. I think the reason why it was 51 days is because I held out for that slightly higher price. I think along the way, there were a few offers there that I said no to that I probably could have got them easily done for about 60 or 70 bucks. But again, I'm wanting to put this item into the episode to show you used shoes in the thrift. You can buy them for $8 and you can go on to sell them for $80. Shoes are just a great category to get in. I'm generally making about a $30 profit on the item. This one, obviously a slight exception with a slightly higher price point. And it all comes down to the brand. Nike just sells incredibly well for me. Hopefully you can find a few Nike shoes out there yourself and you can make a similar type of dollar. Bit of an update on my DVD purchase that I made off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I've been able to obviously spend $350. It was 20 days ago now that I did that and I got 510 DVDs. I've listed up onto eBay about 150 of those DVDs. The rest I'm gonna put back on a Facebook Marketplace because they were listing under $10 on eBay and I just didn't want to put in the time and the effort onto such a small return. But there were 150 of them that were worth $10 or more. So they've gone up and listed. I have sold so far in 20 days, 34 of those DVDs. So I'm selling almost two DVDs every single day just out of that wholesale lot alone. So some incredible numbers there, I thought. My total sold value, $472, take out fees and post. $242 is the money that I've now received back from that purchase. I've only got $108 to go. So not too far away from being back in the profit there, guys. And we do still have a good 115 DVDs listed up onto eBay to sell. So guys, I do encourage you to look for DVDs, look for the media off Facebook Marketplace. If you can be getting them around about 50 cents each, you generally go on to sell pretty well. And my encouragement would be that to try and find out of those lots that you're buying, those that are worth $10 or more. The rest, you can push back on the marketplace. Now here's an item that has performed a lot better than I expected. This was a Nickelback t-shirt. This was a, um, it was Feed the Machine 2019 band tee for their Australia tour. Now I'm not a Nickelback man myself. I know there are a few people uh, out there that are. But uh, I bought this one for $5. The band t-shirts I do like to pick up because there are super fans out there, people that just love the band so much so that they will buy any form of merchandise. Uh, this one is actually sold internationally. Now, I listed it up for $23.50 uh, domestically, obviously we're here within Australia, expecting to sell it for about $15. That's all I thought it was worth. Somebody has paid $30 for international postage over in the UK plus my full asking price of $23.95. So in effect, the item is actually sold with postage for $53.50. Postage was $18 to send it off, so I've made an extra 12 bucks there. Uh, the fees were $8. Guys, I've profited $22 and 50 cents on a uh, Nickelback band t-shirt that I really just didn't think I was gonna get a whole lot of money in. Uh, a 15 day sales cycle, it was a relatively quick turnaround. The one that I've got you for this is that you need to be doing international postage. You just don't know what is gonna go and sell internationally. You don't know where you're gonna make a few extra bucks on postage like that. If you're doing the flat rate of $30 like I am, I'm yet to have any concerns with the extra coin that you pocket from it. And uh, yeah, this one's actually made me $22.50 where I didn't think I was gonna get anything more than a about a five to ten dollar profit. So a great little turnaround there, purely for the fact that I went international. Sticking on the theme of international postage as well, this was a Callaway Golf polo shirt that I picked up very, very recently. Now, this one was only uh, actually bought for free. It was a $5 tag in the op shop. I actually got it for free because I was using my loyalty card. Now, there are three reasons why I wanted to put this one into the video. One was the use of the loyalty card to get this one initially for free. Two, Callaway is a really, really great golfing brand. So for those that play golf out there, you will know that Callaway is a really great brand and polos like this do go on to sell for some great money. And the third one is international postage as I touched on. It had all three with this item. So it sold off a free purchase for $63. Now postage was $18 like I do with my clothing. The fees were $9.45. This polo shirt bought out of the thrift for nothing 
in the space of just six days on eBay has profited me $35 and 55 cents, just madness. So I think you guys need to be looking down the loyalty card path, just asking the questions where you can reduce your costs as much as possible in the thrift and then whack it up with international postage and you just never know. It might sell, you might make yourself some decent money. I will say that the polo shirts for Callaway do go for about 35 bucks pretty commonly, even if it is just sold within your own country. So to get a $35 uh, profit, I thought it was a pretty good result with this one. This next item was another one that I picked up in a trip to the thrift. It was just a week or two ago. This was a sales cycle of just four days. It was the Brooks Ravina 6 women's running shoes. Now, guys, Brooks is a really great brand of running shoes. If you are looking into the shoe uh, game, I would be encouraging you to find Brooks and go on to sell them if they're in great condition. I don't personally come across the brand too much, but when I do, I know that I'm generally gonna profit quite well from it. I bought these for $8. I actually bought this uh, in a set of three. There were three pairs of shoes two Ravina 6s and one Ravina 7. It was clearly a lady that was just cleaning out her shoe closet. She loved the shoe and she just got rid of all of them. This one sold for $55, space of four days, but I will quickly say that the other pair of Ravina 6s and another pair of Ravina 7s also sold for $55 to $60 as well. So in effect, I've actually made a good $170, all in the space of the very same week of being listed on these three pairs of women's running shoes. So I'm profiting about my $30 a pair piece for them. There's nothing too fancy in the actual figures, but it's the fact that they have sold so quick. So three pairs of Brooks, they've all sold for around about a $60 price point, $170 worth of total sales, $90 worth of profit in the space of a week. So there you go, guys. They were my eight best sold sales items of the week and also a few little stories behind the purchase and the sell of each one that hopefully goes on to benefit you guys out there. Uh, let's dive into my weekly sales numbers to let you know how I've gone on the back of having three days off this week. So if we pull the table up, I was actually able to sell 61 items this week, which was definitely above average. For those of you who watch the channel, I generally average around about 50 sold items. Uh, total revenue, 2,421. That is definitely overs. Um, normally I'm around about $2,000. So to hit 2.4, I was pretty impressed by that. The feeds, they worked out to be about 15%, $389. My postage costs, $539. A lot of DVDs shipped out at $4.50. So that's why I'm averaging about $8.85 for postage. Uh, new inventory, eight, $88. I only went out for a trip to the thrift on Thursday, so that's why that number's quite low. Uh, but it has left me with a net cash flow position of $1,404 in, in a, what was only a four-day working week. So, guys, I was really, really happy to see uh, a $1,400 uh, net cash flow position ultimately. And look, I, I didn't work at all Friday, Saturday, and today being Sunday. It's just doing this YouTube video that I'll, is all I'll be doing. Um, the reason as to why I've been able to remain consistent and really even elevate to get more than I normally do was just scheduling in some listings throughout the week for these days that I am having off. So I scheduled in using the DVD wholesale purchase off Marketplace. There was no real large expense to get my hands on those, but what it allowed me to do was it allowed me to have 45 items ready to go and ready to be listed while I went away. And I didn't go on vacation mode or anything like that with my eBay store. I just had those 15 listings ready to go on those three days of the week that I was gonna be away. So in eBay's eyes, it kind of thought that I was still here doing my thing. And meanwhile, I'm having beers in Byron Bay. So I do encourage you guys, if you are planning to have some time off in the future, maybe don't go on vacation mode. Maybe just put in some scheduled listings. And I've seen some great results. I did it in Sydney a little while ago, and then I've down, now done it this weekend in Byron Bay as well. And I've actually strangely been two of my biggest weekends in, in revenue. So um, really excited about that because I will be adopting it moving forward. I think I'm actually gonna try and just take Fridays and Saturdays off every week and just have a five day working week for the first time in about a year. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing uh, adopting this method as much as I'll be doing the end realist strategy, uh, tweaking my price points, all the rest of it, answering questions uh, on those two days off. I, I will be doing the scheduled listings for those two days. But um, yeah, $1,400 in cash flow, ready to get back out for another trip to the thrift and buy some more items after having 61 sell this week. Um, let me know in the comments below, what was your best sold sales item of the week? Always love to hear it. Uh, do drop that into the comments below. If you yet to like the video, please go ahead and do that. Hopefully you've got some value out of it. You can take time off on eBay. There are certainly ways around it. And hopefully this little bit of information today is helping you take some time off because that is as much as important as it is to list on the platform as well. So thank you very much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We'll see you on Tuesday for another vlog. Look forward to catching you then.